Good morning, bleary-eyed, happy Sunday crummers. <laughs> yes, if you're still in bed, I don't mind. It's fine. It's 9 a.m. Well, it's not. The clocks went forward last night, so it's 10 o'clock here in the UK. We are officially in British summertime, although it's not looking very summery out there today. But my body clock is still saying it's nine o'clock. There has been plenty of coffee already this morning, but we are here. Everything has gone to plan. Yes. Although it's been a week of technical issues, but hey, happy Sunday. Um, wherever you are in the world, say hello. Thank you for joining me. We are going in for a full on chocolate easy treat this morning and we'll be starting in about a minute just gonna let everybody come in as we wait but um yeah i hope everyone's safe and well um today's british summertime tomorrow lockdown here in the uk starts to ease again so we can start seeing people in our gardens and 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 things and start getting back to some form of normal but remember let's take it easy folks not all of us have been jabbed yet <laughs> but we're, we're, we're here this morning we're gonna have hopefully a better Sunday session than I did last week I have notes I have written myself a little bit of a script because last week my words weren't coming out at all but <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me. So you're here on the Facebook page or you might be visiting via YouTube or via the Facebook group, but wherever you are, let me know. Say hello. It's always nice to see who's out there. And if you're catching on the replay, hello again as well. Right. Well, it says let's go. So I'm going to get started today because we've, it's just been one of them weeks. Last yesterday, the car alarm decided to keep going off and then this week, the laptop has gone, so I've got a new laptop, and hopefully that's the end of the technical woes and stuff. So um, and I think we should be all right today. We're going in for something really super simple, and you can see everything that's around me. We've got a lot of store ingredients today, so we're not doing any baking. We're just going to put everything together so and see what happens. Hello from Devon. <laughs> Hi, Lou. <laughs> Hope everything's well down there. Um, so, yeah, let's get going. Um, we're going to start off then with making today an Easter chocolate trifle. Now, I've wanted to make a trifle for oh, since I moved to Sirencester probably about 13 years ago. I haven't made one until I was make, putting this one together. I haven't made one for God knows how many years. But trifle has always been something that's been quite sort of retro for me and lots of memories of my gran and stuff like that. But I, I love the look, the layers, the jelly, the cream, the colours, the fruit, everything. And I've seen so many over the years, ones in BBC Good Food, and then Waitrose did an amazing one with Madeline's and Clementine's Christmas the other year, but I've never actually made one. And then when we moved, I realised I'd got quite a lot of ingredients in the cupboard that need using up. And that's where we're going to with this today. So this is going to be using up lots of those things I'd got in the cupboard, lots of chocolate, um, something to sit in the garden with a spoon, and eat whilst we and then we're allowed a rule of six from now on. Um, so that's where we're going with it. And one of the things that always stopped me thinking I can't make a trifle was a hand got trifle bowl, but I'm gonna tell you you can make this in anything. So in terms of this trifle, we're not gonna be using jelly, it's all gonna be about the custard. Um, this is going to serve about eight to ten people, but you can make it in smaller uh, dishes if you want to. I'm going to be making it in one large bowl, or you know, it depends how many, how big a serving you want. But it's really super simple, and like I say, we're going to be using um, store favourites, so things like like uh, mini rolls, um, mini eggs, and store bought store bought cake. 
store bought brownies and store bought custard, all ready made. But you can, if you want to, and have the time, make this from scratch. But I've been getting a, yeah, we love your really easy, quick, and delicious recipes. But can we have something that's really super, super quick where I don't have to do any baking? So that's where we're at today. Um, and the beauty with this is it can be easily adapted. There's lots of different things you can do with it, different flavors um, and things. So this is it's all about the chocolate on this one, all about the chocolate because it is Easter next weekend, which is the season of chocolate after Christmas. Um, although I think there's more chocolate at Easter. I don't know. <laughs> so let's talk about our ingredients then. Um, if you see me looking down and squinting, it is because... The new laptop is significantly smaller than the old one, so the screen is smaller for me to read. <laughs> ah! Ingredients-wise, I haven't given you any um, any uh, sort of measurements because with these, it is really much what you want to put in uh, and how big a bowl is and what sort of bowls you're using and serving. So the, it is sort of nondescript on ingredients um, measurements wise but we're using things like like i said like little uh chocolate logs we've also got um i've got the store-bought cake uh you can buy these sort of like loaf cakes or uh normally you'd be uh, a chocolate swiss roll or something but because we've got the mini rolls i'm going with these store cakes which came from our local store um We've also got lots of Easter chocolate here. I mean, I've got mini eggs, uh, Kit Kat mini eggs, which I was really excited to find. Um, Aero uh, chocolate eggs, they're amazing. Uh, some white chocolate eggs and some Smarties um, unicorn mini eggs for those that want to add a little bit of color to the chocolate. And uh, obviously our mini rolls, these are, uh, store own brand ones but you can get the Cadbury's ones we're also going to be putting in here a dash of um the noughties so we can either use like an Irish cream or I've got a little bit of Tia Maria left uh, so a, a coffee liqueur to complement the chocolate we'll be soaking our cake in that and we'll be talking about that shortly I've got some caramel dolce de leche left over from the brownie tart last weekend. So I want to sort of use some of that as well. Use that up. Uh, I've got some chocolate and some icing sugar. Now the chocolate, we're going to be making uh, a thick chocolate custard with using ready-made custard. And the icing sugar is to sweeten the whipped cream that we're going to be slathering all over. And that's in the fridge at the moment. Uh, a little bit of vanilla extract. That's going in our cream. Some chocolate sauce to drizzle all over the top. And then I've got, like I said, store-bought custard. This is ready-made custard. Now, you can either buy it just standard um, or you can, uh, you can buy chocolate custard um ready-made um like this uh it's not chocolatey enough so that's why we're going to add the extra chocolate you can by all means make your own custard and it tastes amazing with your own custard but we just want to do something quick and simple today in terms of then equipment you're not going to need a lot because we're going to be assembling everything into our dish um, but to start, you'll need some mixing bowls, uh, one for the custard and one to whip our cream in. You'll need things just like a spatula and a spoon and a palette knife and a chopping board and a knife for chopping up our chocolate and our mini rolls. When it comes to what we're putting all of this in, I found this beauty. You know, I was saying I, I've never made an, a trifle because I haven't got a trifle ditch. I found this beauty on Amazon. It's a 20 centimetre, it's got a few sort of flaws in the old um, glass, but it's 20 centimetres um, trifle dish and it was 19 um, and it was reduced down and I've, I just wanted something simple, not anything like my grandma used to be with nice cut glass or anything like that. So I grabbed one of these um, and it's really nice and sturdy. And I can see when I'm not using it, we could probably use it as a fruit bowl or something like 
find that. But I'll pop the link for that if anybody wants to know which one that is. But you can also, you can always do it in a mixing bowl as well or in individual glass bowls um, or um, nice glasses. So like a, the uh, the gin goblets, the big gin round gin glasses. You know, what we're looking for is glass really. So we can see those nice layers. That's what makes the trifle trifle pretty because when we get in everything just merges into one um so we want to be able to see those layers so anything glass is a is pretty much your best bet but just just for looks really you can make it in anything um <laughs> so that's what we're gonna be doing in that so then I'm just going to, let's go back to the main one and you can see everything then um, out and about. So trifles, trifles, I, you know, for me, are really quite reminiscent of the 70s. Um, super retro sort of thing, apparently. I was the end of the 70s. <laughs> but they usually contain fruit and jelly, custard and our whipped cream. And they do actually have a, a sort of, a, they, they hark back to a lot later than the 1970s, sort of like the uh, 1896, I think. And even good old Mrs. Beaton has that sort of um, uh, recipe in, in her book. But trifle, sort of, as most of us know it, with the custard and the fruit and the jelly and the sweetness is sort of around from the, sort of before, like, um, uh, the 70s but really synonymous with with 1970s dinner parties <laughs> um, so but well, you know it's uh, it's coming back into fashion people are really going for trifles at the moment and it is as well as being asked for something simple it's one of those things where um, I sort of get oh could you do a trifle could you do a trifle so uh, yeah um, but what we're going to do first then is we, we'll talk about the layers in the in the bowl as we're layering it up. But first of all, there's a few things I want to do to, before we get sort of putting everything together. And that's making up some chocolate custard because we're going to um, melt the chocolate and the custard, use the custard and melt the chocolate in the microwave just slightly. And a bit like we would do, um, we were doing last week the chocolate and the butter we're just going to allow that to the heat from the custard um, in the microwave to melt the chocolate so for this recipe i'm going to be using the standard um custard not the uh, not the chocolate custard um so this uh, go and anything like this that i don't use that maybe i thought will go to the food bank as well so um we're gonna pop open this this is 500 grams of ready-made custard now i've also got a recipe where i use this on the blog for raspberry chocolate custard pots um and it's a great uh, a great alternative i discovered using it more than making my own custard by tom kerridge actually uh for in one of his um healthier eating cookbooks he recommends it because you can get low fat versions but we are using the full fat version on this one because there's a lot of chocolate so what i'm going to do is um i don't want to put it in a small bowl and melt it because i want to give it enough chance to start to cool down quite quickly once it's come out of the microwave um so i'm doing this in a large mixing bowl and i've just opened up my custard oh I love custard. It doesn't matter if it's a bird's powder, a ready-made, a homemade, uh, a luxurious one with lots in. I absolutely love custard. Um, I don't know if anybody watches Doctor Who with Matt Smith as the doctor. You know what? You, you dip fish fingers in custard. Um, my brother used to always be a banana and custard fiend. Our bananas, is, I'm allergic, so that's, we don't do those, but. Again, a bit like cream eggs and stuff. I didn't come to liking to custard until later on in life. And then at one point, birds did like, an, like a pot noodle, but with custard. 
um, a custard pot, and that's when I started to like them. So when I was talking to my mum the other day, she's like, "But you don't like custard?" I was like, "Well, I don't mind it, but now I love it." <laughs> you can add a few extra things into here if you want. You could add some. Uh, you could add some extra vanilla or some vanilla bean paste or. Um, I don't know, you could add a drop of alcohol, but we're going to be adding our chocolate. And I've got here 150 grams of dark chocolate. And I'm using dark because I want this to be a really rich um, custard. Like I was saying, with the ready-made chocolate, it's quite, it's not intense enough. And I want this to be really dark and lush. So I've got 150 grams of dark chocolate and I'm literally just popping it in and let's just stir that away. and oops i'm just going to use that bowl for that i'm going to pop this in the microwave now for a minute give it a stir and then another um, minute now now i have a microwave i can do this but if you are, you can do this on the hob. Just do it very gently um, on the hob. Come on, go to Max. There. Come on. I thought it's not gonna, oh, don't, I'm, I'm me and technology today, this week, There we go. This month, <laughs> me and technology are just not having fun at all. So we've got the custard and the chocolate in the microwave for one minute on full, then we'll give it a stir and then see how it's doing. It might be that it doesn't need any um, further heating and the, the heat from the custard will melt the last of the chocolate or we'll put it back in that 30 seconds um, minute blast Sorry, so um, if it goes fuzzy or anything just stick your hand up and let me know um, I think it's because see I found this out apparently doing Zumba the other day when I was thinking I can multitask do my Zumba Zoom my <laughs> and turn the, the jack potatoes on to pre-do them in the microwave to start with because apparently the microwave, I'm, I'm not technically minded. All right, okay. That's a quick minute. I can see it was uh, steaming, so I know it is nice and warm. And the chocolate started to melt. I don't know, I think we might need another little blast on this to melt because the chocolate, although it's starting to melt, is a bit chunkier. So let's just do that again. Slightly lower at 600 watts. So that's almost done. And as you could see, the chocolate was melting and it was turning that into a really dumb. We just want it to be nice and thick and unctuous. Now, if you want to, you can also add things into this, like Nutella, to make it really thicken up um, and give it a good. Uh, chocolatey taste but we've got 150 grams of chocolate in that custard so we should should be okay I'm just gonna that's got 15 seconds so before we start chopping things up and start layering out of the bowl I'm gonna get this out and then we'll take a look at that um, let's let's stop it at that point 
And I'm only quickly blasting this so that my bowl isn't hot, hot. So um, remember, if you're taking stuff out the microwave and it's hot, you know, be careful. So this is nice and warming through. My chocolate is melting. It smells amazing. We're not adding cocoa powder or anything like that to this. Oh, there's our 30 set minutes. And we're back. I wish there was an easier way to deal with that. It's just canon. Please. So, this is, it looks like a really thick chocolate custardy ganache. You can use, um, you could use things instead of this, like you could make an Angel Delight mixer. Um, I know in the States you have things like chocolate pudding mixes, uh, where they're not so easily available here. Um, but you, you could use like a pudding mix instead. Now, this is just slightly warm, so I'm going to pop this. I scrape off my spatula and I want it to chill and then I'm going to pop it in the fridge. Uh, I've got a spoon out but I want that for something else so I'm just going to use this. Now there's nothing in my fridge today because it's apart from the cream that we're going to use. Um, but you wouldn't normally put warm into the fridge. That's fine. the ketchup out the way we're in. Right, so the custard is now chilling. So next thing we want to do, and this is the bit where we start building everything up. So we're going to take our uh, trifle dish and we're going to start with this. Now it's all, <laughs> trifles are all about the layers. The layers are also going to give everything a little bit of stability, save it all just sinking back in and and being um, all gunky at the bottom. And how you layer this up is entirely up to you. Now, most people traditionally you'd use uh, sponge fingers um, soaked in cherry, uh, cherry in cherry, <laughs> or something like that, and then have your, your fruit and your custard and everything up. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using uh, various things. So we're going to start with our mini rolls. We're going to chop those up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them spiral side out around the bay, uh, around the outside of the trifle dish, and then we're going to take some of the cake and pop that in the bottom to form a base. And we want that base in there, like I say, it gives it stability. It doesn't get everything dropping through, um, and gives you start allows you to build those layers. Uh, and we're going to soak them in a little bit of. Uh, so to start with then I'm going to use the mini rolls and these are just store-bought ones the chocolate covered ones oh they're not as big as the Cadbury's ones unless the Cadbury's ones are shrunk as well um I do have more should we need them <laughs> if you didn't want to use a uh, cake or mini rolls or a Swiss roll uh, you could use something like um, just put those in there. Um, brownies. So if you've made brownies recently, or um, you can buy store-bought brownies, obviously, because this one is all about simple this week. You could be, uh, you could put those in there instead. So with these, I'm going to give them a good inch or so. So this, I'm going to get about three slices. Out of each that chocolate's going to crumble i'm going to need more it's a good job i've got more in the, <laughs> in the cupboard and um, i'm just literally as you can see now popping them around the side with that open end 
So we see the spiral. We're going to probably do a couple of these. So let's get some more. I'm I'm being good as well. I, there's a piece of chocolate here staring at me, but I, I'm I'm being ever so good at the moment with my eating, and all I can smell is chocolate. All I can see is chocolate. All I want to do is eat the piece of chocolate that's there on the side. <laughs> so I've started with a layer then of my roll, uh, Swiss mini Swiss rolls, my mini rolls. I've got some here, I've got some spare, I've also got some in the cupboard, so we probably use those as well. Just move that out of the way. Now, I've got two store-bought cakes here. I've got a double chocolate chocolate chip and a chocolate chip vanilla. So for the base, though, I'm going to use this guy. Now, you, like I say, you can, you can use store-bought, you could use Madeira cake, um, and, you know, the old Madeira cake, angel cake slice, um, packs that you get but or you can make your own but I'm doing quick and easy today so we can talk about assembling oh look at that oh my god I photographed the brownie pie the other day finally to Ian's delight, and when I opened the tin, the uh, half past seven in the morning to photograph it, I was met with this this amazing chocolate smell. Um, yeah, <laughs> I've got the same. So all I'm doing now is I'm just going to cut this one into slices. Oh, oh, that's the wind! If you. <laughs> And I'm just going to now layer that in the bottom here between in the sort of – I haven't been able to get the, the bowl cam done, but you can see, like, I'm layering up there. And I'm going to now just take some of those extra bits, like this piece of um, roll here, and just fill in the gaps. Um, and a little bit more cake. Now you could make this gluten free, you just need to make sure that you're using um, gluten free uh, bakes or you're baking gluten free, uh, however you're doing that. And I'm just going to push that there. And Fill a little hole in here. Now you're never going to be able to get it 100% covered over the bottom, but you want to try and get get as much covered as you can of the base. So, as you can see, I've got I've probably got a few gaps where those Swiss uh, mini rolls are, but that's fine. I could take, actually, oh, there's one that's the wrong way around. We don't want that. We want you right side out. Thank you. Um, I was thinking at this point now, you might want to put some mini eggs in or some extra chocolate or uh, bits and pieces with to fill in these gaps. But we're going to leave it because then when we put our custard on, it's going to fill in the gaps. But we won't, you know, it won't go in front of our swiss rolls there and we'll still see those on the edge before we put some uh custard on though we do want to soak it now trifle sponges typically soaked in in sherry good old sherry trifle from the 70s but because we're going chocolate we want something a bit more so either an irish cream or a coffee liqueur or some cold coffee as well so um I run out of Bailey's, so we've got the good old Aldi Bally Castle, and we've got some Tia Maria and Louise. I know this is uh, Tia Maria used to be uh, yours in a Friday night tipple in the Friday club. So um, I need to use this up because I've lost the lid as well, which is 
hence why it's got this uh, clinker over the top. But we're going to be, uh, you want about a, um, a, tea, a tablespoon or so. So. That's pretty much all that's in there. Yes. So I'm just going to pour this over that chocolate cake. I'm going to finish it. That is it. A tablespoon and a half. I've had this in the cupboard for ages and that's all that was left in it. Oh dear, deary me. <laughs> we moved to this as well for a tablespoon and a half of tea, Maria. Oh dear. So this is the coffee liqueur soaking onto my cake on the bottom. That's all in there. And it'll soak in and make that all nice and unctuous. So I can't believe I've, I'm, I've moved that for that. <laughs> I want to put a layer now in before I put the chocolate custard on the top. And I'm going to be using uh, some of the caramel that I've got left over from last week. This is the um, carnation caramel, like a dolce de leche. Again, you can make your own. I have this left over, so it makes sense to use it up. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get a good spoon, and I'm gonna layer it over what I've just, um, I've just put in there. So now I know Gina likes my offset spatulas, but they're not easy in a trifle dish. <laughs> But you can use the tip just to spread it around a bit. Or just dollop it in with your spoon. And you don't have to do this. You don't have to add the caramel. But we like, you know, we're going full out. So we might as well. We'll add another spoon. And then that will leave me enough for a little bit later. Some more and a little bit to drizzle over the top. So I'll just pop that to one side. I've realized I didn't get my hand mixer out and I haven't told you you'll need that for whisking your cream, but uh, we will be using a hand mixer. You can use a stand mixer as well. So we're just easing around the caramel there. I've not pushed it out onto the um, onto the mini rolls. I've just got it in the centre. Now, before I add the custard, keep saying that, I'm going to add a little bit of something, a little bit of crunch, because otherwise we're just going to have lots of layers of, uh, of soft with the cake and the caramel and the custard. So, in here then, I've got all sorts. I've got you can use mini ones. You could, you could even swap these for some smarties. I've got, I'm not going to use the unicorn ones because um, these are pink and blue and they're not going to necessarily look right. Um, and I do want to save stuff on the top as well. Uh, these Kit Kat mini eggs, which I'm dying to get into. One egg is one serving. calories. This is not anything for the faint hearted on the calories. Got milky bar eggs. White chocolate actually would go quite nicely in here as well, but I might lay them up a bit further up. Normal, normal mini eggs. Um, but I'm gonna go with these. These are the Aero chocolate ones, which are I love Aero chocolate. And I think it's it again, it's one of them things that had a resurgence sort of later on. Um, oops. And these have got no shells, they're just Pure chocolate and I'm just gonna I'm gonna strategically place them between the uh, the, the the bit of the mini egg just uh, the sorry the mini roll on the on the caramel oh god <laughs> I will have some chocolate later uh, but not until this afternoon. That's my treat, and I all I could smell is chocolate. <laughs> so we put a layer of those around the edge now. So 
next one we want to do is our custard but i'm thinking i'm gonna probably let the custard i'm gonna have a look at it now probably let that just chill a little bit longer and we'll whisk the cream up um and then we'll, but let's have a look let's see what that's like So the custard is cooling and is starting to firm up, which is perfect because when we layer it, we don't want it to be too liquid, everything will fall in. So I'm going to pop this back in the fridge and what we'll do now is we'll whisk up the, um, the cream, uh, the whipping cream. So I'm going to pop the custard back in the fridge and swap that for the cream. Here we go. Now here I've got 500 millilitres of whipping cream. We want whipping cream or, or double cream, but you want something that's a high fat content, not a single that we can whip up and it's gonna hold its form, its shape, because we don't want it to collapse. So whipping cream has got the highest fat content. So that's really sort of ideal for this at the moment. I'm just going to put it into a larger bowl um, to whisk this up. I couldn't get both large bowls in the fridge. I've always would have done that on both. Um, I'm not going to... Let's just get... Any last bits out of here. Right, let's go there. I say I forgot to get the hand mixer out, but that's what we're using today. And pieces. You could do this by hand if you want. You could do this uh, with a stand mixer. I just can't be bothered to get the uh, KitchenAid out um, from over there. So we'll be doing it with the hand mixer. Oops. Let's just plug that in. There we go. Um, just had a flick through my notes. <laughs> well, quick not flick, a look whilst I was plugging that in. Uh, to remind myself what I wanted to also talk about. I was just thinking, yeah, I I, other things, trifles that I've talked If anybody is old enough, young enough, remembers friends, um, has watched Friends, <laughs> then you, we might, you'll remember Rachel's uh, Thanksgiving trifle. I think I posted it. Somebody recreated it, but actually using the savoury elements they made sweet, <laughs> rather than it being quite uh, just the thing. But when she had the base of fabulous, but it looks great when you see it, but this base of of the beautiful, the custard, the things, and then the pages of the recipe book were stuck together. So she then laid it up with beef and um, onions, and I think there's peas in there. And then she topped it off with more custard and bananas. Just <laughs> not quite what we're going for now. So we're going to whip up our whipping cream, and we're going to add in. We're going to sweeten it up. So we're going to be using icing sugar. And I've got 200 grams of icing sugar here. Depends how sweet you want it, really. Um, and I'm going to sieve it because I don't want any lumps when I'm whisking this through. So. And I'm still using a little bit of the unrefined um, icing sugar there, so which is quite lumpy. I didn't get enough spoons out for me today. <laughs> it's a lot easier to find things now we've been living in this kitchen. Well, not in the, in the house, but you know, things are like finding things now. Things have got their places. Um, I'm going to order a new sofa this week. <laughs> Just whilst we're sieving, general chat. <laughs> Oh, but it's, it's been a week of tech issues, I tell you. The laptop was failing last Sunday. 
Then we tried a family Zoom on Tuesday and it just, it sat there and it sat there and Ian's convinced it's just me. And then Wednesday it was not a happy bunny at all. So Friday there was a new laptop from Amazon. So <laughs> I've just sieved through the sugar so we don't have any lumps. <laughs> Keep hold of the spoon because uh, I might need it. And before I get going any further, I'm going to pop a little bit of vanilla in there too. Now you could pop in, um, you could pop in some whatever you've, oh, whatever you've soaked your uh, your cake in. So if you had Tia Maria, you could add a little, uh, an extra tablespoon of Tia Maria or Bailey's or something like that. Um, but I'm adding vanilla because we've got alcohol elsewhere. So it's a good tablespoon of vanilla in there. And I'm using a tablespoon because I want it to be quite vanilla-y. So I'm going to fold through the icing sugar first by hand. I don't want this to cloud up. And start low. start low and then it will start getting thick. So mum said, uh, you know, oh, you can make some smaller ones for you. You can. I'm sorry, this is really noisy. I'm going to up the speed now. You can see it starts to thicken up. It's in the bowl. It's still a little bit wet, so nearly there. Be the time when you know you can lick the beaters, but I'll put <laughs> that's it. So we've got a really thick whipped cream. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge then for the moment. I'll swap this with the custard. So 
our chocolate custard, let's find this chocolatey spatula, uh, has, has thickened up. It started to form that custard skin. So we're just going to give it a stir through. And then, next. So we're going to pop uh, a layer of custard on here. Now you can use a big spoon or um, a serving spoon or something. So I'm just going to use this one to layer it on. And layering on like this is easier than pouring it on. It means you've got a little bit of control of where it goes and how much it sort of spreads out. I'm just gonna ease that round the edges. You see, cause that's cooled down, it's nice and thick. It's not sort of running away with itself. Good chocolate layer. I put the cream away and actually I'm gonna need that in a second. So <laughs> I'm gonna pop that to one side just there. And the chocolate spoon I used earlier. I'm just gonna just gonna let that ease out a little bit. Go. I'd never make a pasta or anything like that. Um, so let's see, this side's the better side there. And it will probably sit into practice. Depends how close you've got your Swiss rolls to the edge. And then with our whipped cream then, Lots of things, lots of things. That's one that we used for something else. No, it's not, that's the cream one. So we're going to then, um, just put that there. Take our whipped cream and our next layer. That's got caramel sauce on that. Again, this is another one where you probably need more equipment and hands than anything else. So I'm just going to push that round to layer it off. Now, just because I've got a deep bowl doesn't mean I'm going to fill it up, but I do want to get a bit more in here than I've got. So I'm just going to move bowls around a little bit and oops. I've just got stuff everywhere now it's, <laughs> it's like ah um, and then with some more of this cake that I've got from earlier that we cut up and some more mini rolls so I'm going to need another what did I need I need four so I need another two out of the cupboard which leaves two for Ian later. You could do this um, with the ones that you get uh, at like Christmas or e uh, this is Easter, Halloween, that I've got all sorts of things inside them. And then I'm just gonna, again, pop these. I've made these slightly thinner now because we're going the, as the, bowl tapers up, obviously we've got a larger circumference, so I want to get a little bit more out of there. And there's all these bits of chocolate that are falling off them. I can, you can just sprinkle over the top. Oops, you wanna go. Twist roll side out. 
you know, the, the crumbs, you know, if you haven't already eaten them, <laughs> can quite easily go inside the trifle. How are we doing for time? Not too bad. Oops, let's get that one in the corner. So you could do this with a larger, you know, like a regular size Swiss roll um, rather than the mini rolls. Oh, there's our 30 minutes. That's why I was wondering how we were doing for time. So I thought it's got to, it's got to go again in a minute. <laughs> and the bottom layers always tend to sort of get a bit more seepage on them because they're the first ones in and the, the custard and everything in there. So. So we've got another layer. You can see the layers are building up. That's why we want to do it in a glass jar, really. So the rest of this double chocolate cake, I'm just going to place in on top. That's why we want to chill things as well. It just helps when we're sort of assembling everything to get it in place. So I'm going... I'm not going to tip this this time so to show you because that would be disastrous. But let's just get that in there. And a little bit more. There we go. Let's just push that out of the way. So we've got another layer of our trifle. Now we could, if we wanted to, drizzle again, but I don't want to make this soggy because it will sort of fall out. Let the sogginess and the, the boozy bit at the bottom stay there. So the next thing we did then, if you remember, is we put some caramel on. So we'll do that again because we're using up. This is what I'm saying. I'm trying to use up items that I've got in the cupboard or... That, are, that have been sat there a bit like the custard for a while and that tear maria i just want to want to get it used up um before it's it's end dates or best befores or don't want to keep buying new stuff it's like anything you're out of the supermarket and let's see what's in the cupboards first and and things like so you've got the chocolate custard in there as well that i will um things like that they actually the food banks um Ask for the treats because everybody goes for teas and coffees and and things, but sometimes it's the treats that are missing as well. So that's the last of the custard, that uh, the caramel there. I was going to try and save some for the top, but I've got my chocolate sauce to drizzle, so I'm just going to help that caramel spread round a little bit first. Now, if you're doing this yourselves, you'll be a lot quicker at putting the layers together um, and everything. So it doesn't normally take as long as because I'm chatting and, and things, but trifles are effectively are really quick and easy things to do. Um, you can, if you want to ensure that you get really firm layers, chill between each, um, like the custard layer and the cream layer, uh, but we haven't on this because we're doing it all at once. So. We've got a collection of dirty palette knives over there. So we've got another layer in, and on top then we added some of our chocolate, and we've got the aero eggs again to add round. Now, I have seen, and I've only got four mini eggs, uh, four cream eggs, which is why I haven't done it. Where we've got these uh, Swiss rolls around the outside, instead of like alternate or every couple, you could put the uh, put half of a cream egg or a mini cream egg. Oh no, I'm gonna run out of the the aero chocolate just before the edge. That's not good planning, Louise. Um, so what I'm gonna do 
So you're going to mix it up a little bit. We'll move them around and put some mini eggs in. So these are the mini egg mini packets left over from last weekend. So I'm just going to, I'm doing this again like I did before, just alternating between, um, within the gaps of the, uh, of the Swiss rolls. And I'm going to now get to a point where I've got extras. So I'm just going to pop these in the middle this time. A little extra. Just three there in the middle. And you could you could totally do something different at that point as well. You don't have to use the same chocolate that you've used further down. So now we're back to the custard. So with our big spoon. Oh, Louise, no, no, no. Don't do that. I'll clean that up in a second. It's because it's a sort of a shallow serving spoon. I'm going to save a little bit of custard for towards the top. What did you do that for? Tell you this new work surface as well is amazing. <laughs> and so much easier to clean. I just went to my hands. <laughs> Done it. I thought this last week as well. It's like I love making things with chocolate, but it's I don't like the mess. I don't like the mess. So we've put a layer of chocolate custard on. I've got a little bit that we'll use for the top at the end. Just things. I'm not going to spread this out much further. I'm just going to ease it through a little bit there, and it will find its own way. And then back in with our. Uh, and now oh, I'm, give, I'm going to give up today. I'm going through spoons. I'm sorry to not. So I'm going to put some more cream on here. And then I'm not going to use all of it because I want to use that. I'm going to try and get another layer of cake, a little bit of custard, and then finish this off with the top once it's all set. So I'm just going to, with this cream now, I'm going to pop that back in the fridge because when I'm finished and this is all set, I make it sort of, um, we'll, we'll pop, pop all this on and make lots of lovely mounds and decorate it with the chocolate and stuff. But, so. Pop that one back in the fridge. And then just layer that out. So you don't have to have it all to the edges, you know, it can just be rough. We can see all our layers coming together and you'll, you'll find when you put it out to serve, you'll find, well, that's my best side. Um, things, but we've got, got lots of nice layers. For this last bit then, I am going to finish off the chocolate cakes that I've got. Um, we have, do we have, we have some Swiss mini rolls or do I? We could come up 
we could come up if we wanted to. We could uh, make another layer. But I've got some cakes and bits and pieces left over and, and this chocolate custard. So I don't really want it to go to, to waste. So sorry, and the two mini rolls that were left over, you're not having. Apologies. And um, I'm going to do a quick, short, smaller, not so deep version of the... Um, of what we've just done further down so then i'll pop it into the fridge and it will it will set up before we put the last of that whipping cream on and decorate the top with all these bits and pieces so we're the last two so let's chop through our mini rolls i'm going to try and do this a bit more strategic now so and then i can fill in the gaps so fours that and then what have I got? Four, five bits left over. So one, two, three, four. And then with this cake, I'm just going to then fill in. I've got lots of this left over. So Fill in those gaps at the outside. This is what I mean about using up what's left over in the cupboard and being easy to do. So, so there we go. And I've got a little bit left over, so I'm going to layer this with the last bit of the chocolate strawberry chocolate cake. This is a chocolate chip one. We've had the double chocolate until now. And let's pop these in there because we're trying to use it up, we don't want to waste. I'm just sort of cutting it to fit the holes. I've chopped this one a bit more chunky for the top. It also wasn't as big a cake. So. Okay. Some off-cut bits for Ian. Let's get rid of that and that. And I've just got a pile of washing up, so you guys can see and finally the last bit of our chocolate custard on the top there without spilling it everywhere louise um let's do this this way Ooh, a little bit There we are. And up oh, that's the spoon. And that then will go in the fridge just to set and firm up before I put the last of the uh, cream on the top before serving. So, there's all sorts of mess here, I'm afraid. 
But what I'll do when I decorate the top is I'll use the last of the mini eggs. I'll probably use the Kit Kat eggs and maybe some um, Milky Bar eggs as well and some chocolate sauce. Here, just the, the just the drizzly stuff, or you can make your own, and um, maybe the, those cream eggs that I've got that I haven't had enough uh, space to use them, or enough to use them in here. But you can see we've got these lovely layers, and they're not neat, they're not perfect. If you want them like that, chill between each layers. But when you dig into this, it's just going to go, and it's all going to mush together anyway. Um, so. Yeah, this is as far as we're going with this this morning. I'm going to see if I can get this quickly in the fridge whilst you guys are still there. And then I can give you a final rundown of what we've done. Let's move, move some bits around. There we go. <laughs> One trifle and the rest of the cream whipped ready in the fridge to go later. Um, and a pile of washing up, which you can see. This is the only bit of this kitchen I don't like, as you guys can now see the washing up. Before I was able to throw it around to one side and go back to it off camera. So then, let's just quickly, I've made a really quick and it quick it's been a, an hour or so but a really easy easter trifle um using what was left over in the cupboard using store cupboard and store-bought ingredients you say you can make it from scratch if you want to make brownies and cake and fresh custard and trust me it'll be a million it will taste amazing because it's homemade as well but this if you if you're looking for something quick and easy like you guys were asking for um, in for as a dessert using stuff that you can just grab in the supermarket then this is this is what it is um and it is just uh, it's a it's a chocolate twist on a classic of this super retro dessert that we found doesn't just stem from the 1970s it goes all the way back to 1896 um but you can mix it up it's really it's really easy to mix it up you can make gingerbread ones you could make fruit ones or different all sorts he could really just go back to really retro custard jelly fruit and cream and sprinkles on the top this one will serve about eight to ten people um depending on how big actually it probably make more than that because <laughs> we've gone for quite a deep one but you don't have to go so deep you don't have to fill your bowl if you don't want to but you can make it as individual portions in 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 serving bowls or you could make it in a mixing bowl if you don't have a trifle bowl what we're looking for is it's getting that glass dish or whatever uh to, in order to see those really lovely layers and when you're layering it remember you want to be putting in a good solid base to start with with the cake give that a little bit of a soak then maybe something for some crunch or and then your custards um, and some whipped cream and then repeat that layer all the way top and then just finish it off with lots and lots of whipped cream and lots of other fabulous things sort of to go on the top. But it's really, really easy and adaptable. Like I say, I haven't given you specific ingredients. Um, the, the amount of chocolate I used was because in the custard was because I wanted a really dark, chocolatey, rich chocolate custard. But you can use... Um, a store-bought uh, custard. They just don't tend to be as chocolatey as I prefer. You, um, I've added sugar into icing sugar into my whipping cream to make it to sweeten it up, and I use 200 grams. But again, depends on on how sort of what sweetness level you, you want. Um, it's entirely down to you. I've used mini eggs, chocolate bunnies, chocolate rolls, dark chocolate all sorts uh chocolate chips you can use chocolate sprinkles to the top anything goes left over easter chocolate from next weekend if there's any or you can manage to keep some and hide it away to the side equipment wise 
you need a knife, a chopping board if you're just using store-bought uh, store ingredients, a knife and a chopping board, um, a hand whisk or something to whisk your cream up with and some spatulas. And as we've seen, a lot of spoons because I've gone through a lot of spoons this morning. <laughs> and I say, I've used a 20 centimetre trifle dish and I will link that below uh, to the one that, uh, that I used on Amazon with an affiliate link. And but you can you can do it in anything and you can scale it down as well. You don't have to use as much, you know, so you can halve it or, or what have you. So that's your that's that's the ingredients list. Um, the, everything will be on the website uh, now. I have the new laptop and the, everything is working and I can now finally work. And I was beavering away last night writing up the brownie tart from last week. Um, there's a, all these ones that I've now got queued to go out are going to be going out over the next week or so um, as well. So yeah, finally, it looks like I'm back in the world of technology um, and things. But they, they will all be down here on the website as usual. Um, and if you you obviously I post them to the Facebook page, but if you sign up to the newsletter as well, which you'll find on the website, then you'll get them as soon as they go live. But that's it. So, and uh, yeah, it's British summertime this morning. The clocks went forward an hour. So it is actually just normal starting time, 10, 10, 10, 12 minutes past 10. Uh, but it's, it's, it's 11 o'clock. It's not looking nice out there. So, you know, I'm hoping as this week we go into lockdown easing that it's going to be a lot nicer so we can sit out in the garden with uh, at least some of my family um, and then see the others when we can travel out of the local area. But I hope that if you're doing that this week um, and you're able to see your loved ones um, and your friends, I, I wish you, I hope you have a lovely time. And remember, we're not out of it yet, but stay safe and everything. Next weekend is Easter. I will be here because... You know, we can't be Easter hunting at this side, but I will be here. We will be making an Easter egg cheesecake. So keep hold of one from the Easter bunny because you'll need it. The web, the recipe for that is already on the site. We're going to be making a cheesecake inside an Easter egg shell. So, uh, you know, snaffle one of those off from the Easter bunny next weekend when he leaves it so you can make the cheesecake. It is really simple. There's no baking involved. Um, and it's really good fun. But from me and the mess, uh, at least my words came out today. Yay! From me and the mess, I hope that you enjoy the rest of your weekend. You have a lovely week. Um, and I will see you next weekend and we'll see what the Easter Bunny has brought. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye for now.